Hello everyone, welcome to Statistics and Legal Issues in MRC Sport A exam. This lecture is done for MRC Sport A online course, and we are happy to announce what are important questions in MRC Sport A. We have about five to seven questions, two of them about sensitivity versus specificity, and two of them about how to choose a statistical test one of them about audit versus research, and also three about consent. So we'll go through about this inside the course to, to understand what is a standard deviation and what's all of that. This would be inside the course, but and also for the uh, tests, uh, when to choose the ANOVA, when to choose uh, one sample t-test and all of that. Uh, what is the definition of normal distribution versus. So this, to be honest, inside the course discussed in brief, but now I will help you by the consent forms. So we have four types of consent forms inside the UK. Consent form one for a patient, agreement to treatment or investigation. Consent form two, this is a parents for their child and Form three is one and two, but for a minor diagnostic uh, interventions. But consent form four is when patient is lacking capacity, you will do it with two consultant signature, and this is called consent form four. So consent form one is a patient agreement to treatment or investigation. So this is a the normal inside the UK, we are used to do use this. And consent form four, this is in Beats ward used in pediatrics. So the parents agree to treatment or investigation for their child. And this is suitable for all treatment and whether minor or intermediate or major investigations. Many people, ask about what is consent form three. This is patient or parent, but for diagnostic interventions and minor treatment procedures. So might be in the endoscopy, in the incision and the drainage, this might be used as long as this is considered diagnostic or minor treatment. So it's, it is might be used at this situation. Consent form four, this is when you have a life-saving or best interest procedure when the patient is lacking capacity. But what is capacity? Capacity is very important definition inside the UK. It is the ability of the patient to understand and retain information and ability to give informed consent for your procedure. For example, I'm going now for a comatose patient. So whether this patient is capacitized or with capacity, with capacity or no, you should ask yourself the definition of capacity. Is that patient able to understand? No, it's not able to understand. Able to retain the information? No. Is able to come back to you by informed consent based on his understanding of the patient, of the procedure benefits and risks? No. So this patient is now lacking capacity as well for dementia patients, as well for any patient who is inability to understand, retain information about your procedure. Now you have to think about consent form four. You as a doctor, as a health care professional, you are going to consent for him to proceed without consent with two consultant signature for accepting this. But there are important definitions here. Please make sure there are no outstanding or standing arrangements like what? Like advanced directive refusing that particular procedure. Like what? Before I go to the hospital five years back, I wrote a paper 
that I don't want to do laparotomy when I have something going in my tummy, in my abdomen. I don't like any doctor to open my tummy, for example, or I don't like CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. At this time, you shouldn't override the advanced directive, which are pre-written papers stating that we are refusing this particular treatment. Okay, so this is advanced directive. Lasting power of attorney, this is for a specific sector. Like, for example, my relative or my friend is responsible for me in a health condition or financially. It is lasting power of attorney. It is spe specialized in one sector. For example, if you are going to proceed with treatment for a patient and this patient got a relative with lasting power of attorney, this relative can say if it is in health issues, then this relative is able to refuse any treatment for the patient that he is responsible. He is carrying his lasting power of attorney. So this is a relative or a friend carrying papers for the patient, saying that he, he or she is responsible for the patient in health or financial issues. Also court appointed deputy, it is the same. It is by the court refusing specific treatments and there is co something called EMCA. EMCA means that the government, the UK government itself gives some people belonging to the government some responsibilities that they are going to stop you and ask you about this treatment. For example, I have a patient, frail, elderly, 89 year old gentleman with a triple A rupture, chronic kidney disease, disseminated malignancy. And this is triple A rupture now, and you are going for theater for this patient. Now the government will these independent mental capacity advocates will say, listen, this procedure is futile, is deadly for the patient. This patient, if you are going to return him back in life because of this rupture of AAA treatment, this is futile, it is deadly because this patient is a frail elderly with disseminated malignancy. So no need to return him back. So these people, are meant by the government and responsible to say no or yes for you and for your treatment. So please, when you do consent form four, for a patient lacking capacity or unconscious, make sure that there is none of the four sections here. Consent or proceed without consent. We are going to talk in brief about consent or no. So I will give examples that will come in your exam, in Mars is exam. It is very clear. So I will give, for example, for you, adult lady, adult lady, she's pregnant, and she is 23, female, pregnant, and coming with acute appendicitis now. And you explained her the full procedure, and she told you, no, I don't want to proceed. Would you proceed or no? The answer is, you will not proceed without consent of the patient because adult patient is responsible for her life or death. Question number two, patient coming to you with fracture, femur and pelvis. This patient is bleeding and going to die of
to die of bleeding. And he is fully aware. He is fully aware. And you told him, listen, I'm going to operate in you because you have multiple pelvic and femur or tibial fractures and you are going to die. And this patient is now aware and fully capacitized. Ask yourself, is the patient having capacity or no? If the patient having capacity, then he is responsible for his life or death. So you couldn't proceed without treatment. Example number two, a lady. Okay, I don't think she's a lady, but it's okay. So this lady coming with her, her, her husband who is comatose and got multiple fractures and you as a doctor ask this lady, we are going to operate on your husband and your husband. And she said, mm -mm, no, this wife is not that good to be honest because she wanted her husband to die what you are going to do you are going to and the patient is comatose the patient is with no capacity you as a healthcare professional in this time you see that this wife decision without lasting power of attorney without any advanced directive pre-written papers by the patient you are going to operate him and take him into theater because you will do consent form four and you as a doctor is responsible for the patient best interest. You will choose the best treatment for this patient because you will act in his best interests by consent form four. Example number uh, five maybe so you have a child coming to you with his parents okay from religion background or religious background Genova witnesses and this patient got need to transfuse blood whether he is young or whatever so this guy now needs a blood transfusion if he is young or small so you are going to transfuse him or no and he needs a blood transfusion this this guy is a gentleman or a child chappy with spleen splenic injury and needs a blood and this child as well for any hemolytic anemia or whatever you will ask yourself is my patient stable, can be managed by any substitutes or no, any other substitutes or no, like IV fluids, like uh, cell savers, you will transfuse the same blood of the patient to him if he's bleeding, IV fluids, whatever, and any crystalloid like Hartman or but if the patient needs blood urgently now, he's going to die if he's going to die now, you are going to transfuse him despite this uh, guy's against their wish. Why? Because in this situation, the religion background is not responsible for this child life or death. So you are going to proceed without consent. And you can refer the, the matter to the court, but you will proceed, yes. Okay, another example. 16-year-old lady, okay, this is 16-year-old lady, is coming with acute right iliac fossa pain, and she is... HCG positive and you suspect this is 16 year old lady okay and you suspect ectopic rupture ectopic pregnancy and 
you are now consider this lady is not an adult. Why? Because she below she's below 18. So this 16 sorry 16 year old lady is below 18 consider a child, right? Not adult. But she told you, yes, I understand your operation. I accept. Would you consent her or no? The answer is yes, consent her. Why? Because what's called Gillet competency. Write in Google Victoria Gillick. You will understand that Victoria Gillick is a known personality inside the UK, run a lot of court issues to gain this right that any child or any person under 18, as long as you as a doctor consider him has having capacity, then he or she can consent for themselves without being adult. Yes, without being adults. This is called Gila competency. So you are going to consent the child. The child can accept, but cannot refuse. If she refuses, then you are going to talk to the parents and you will not consider her capacitized. Why? Because she does not understand that this ectopic pregnancy is a social sepsis and she eventually die with intra-abdominal sepsis if she will not accept. But if she accepts, then proceed with consent the patient. A question. A 58-year-old gentleman is admitted, is admitted to the hospital with a strangulated bar umbilical hernia, and this hernia requires urgent operative intervention. He has a history of severe depression and is currently under section for a treatment of his mental condition. The patient does not consent to treatment even though he understands the condition and understands also the benefits of having an operation and the potential outcomes of not having it. Now, this patient, ask yourself, is this elderly patient having capacity or no? The answer is yes, because this is the definition of capacity. He understands the condition, benefits, and harms, right? So doctor can consent for the patient? No, because the patient is adult having capacity. No adult can consent for an adult as long as the other adult having capacity. So this is wrong. Doctor can treat the patient under duty of care? Wrong. As long as the patient is having capacity, we couldn't override by any reason or means. Doctor can treat the patient under the Mental Health Act. No, we're going to see why no. Patient refusal to treatment is valid and cannot be overridden. This is the correct answer. If the patient having capacity can refuse and can say yes. So this is a correct answer. So if he say, if you define the capacity and you find this patient is capacitized, Despite having a depression, no problem, but he's still having capacity. So now he can consent for himself or can refuse as well. So, so now this is the correct answer. Patient refusal to treatment is inv invalid and can be overridden. No, it is valid and can be overridden. You couldn't bypass his refusal as long as he is having capacity. So the D is the answer and patient understand risk of vision of benefits of surgery. And now he is deemed to have the capacity to make the informed decision irrespective of his, of his chronic mental problems. What is the Mental Health Act? Many people asked about this does not allow treatment for any medical condition other than psychiatric disorder. Again, Mental Health Act does not allow for treatment of any medical condition other than psychiatric disorders. 
And again, no adult can consent for another adult. So the patient acceptance or refusal is valid and the doctor cannot override or bypass it. So I finished to this point and I'm very happy to announce the end of this uh, rabbit orientation and we are going to uh, say goodbye now. Thank you so much.